Welcome back. We told you a little bit about what's coming up this term, but who better to help us break it all down than Fox News' Shannon Bream, the brand new host of Fox News Sunday and a 15-year veteran of the Supreme Court press corps. Shannon, first of all, congratulations on the successful new role and thank you for being here. Thanks, Katie. Great to be with you. So we previewed for folks a little bit of the major headline cases that we at least know for now are coming up to the court. Affirmative action, free speech, or maybe religious expression, and of course the independent state legislature theory case. What are you keeping an eye on this term? You know what is going to be so interesting to me is getting back in the courtroom. You know, it's been closed for more than two years because of COVID. Press, we were allowed in in a very limited way with testing and masking, but this seems like a full return to normal starting on Monday for arguments. It's always good to get a look at the justices who've been gone for the summer. They've been out there making some statements in various speeches and different organizations and groups, and people have taken a lot of note um, looking to see whether there is tension there among the justices. Um, they've Multiple of them, they have experienced expressed the frustration over the leak investigation. We're still waiting to hear what we're going to get from the court on that. Um, but it makes it tough for them in some ways to work together. Uh, I think it was Justice Thomas who said, you're sort of looking over your shoulder. Who can I trust with this material? And to get the job done, they have to do. They have to, you know, really handle sensitive material back and forth between offices and clerks and that kind of thing. So I'm very interested to get back in the courtroom, see them on Monday and, and feel the dynamic, which is always different in person. I will say it felt a little strange to see the courtroom full at Justice Jackson's investiture on Friday. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it felt like we were totally back to normal. I'm not sure I saw many masks in the room, a couple, including one on Justice Sotomayor. But uh, talking about, you mentioned the leak investigation, we learned from a speech that Justice Gorsuch gave recently at a conference in the Tenth Circuit that there's a committee on the court overseeing this investigation, and there will perhaps be a report. He mentioned it. Do you think that we will ever see any such report or that the public will be able to understand what the committee's work was. I sure hope so. From everything we can ascertain, this has been kept completely internal. We've asked the court multiple times, what's the status of the investigation? Is it over? Does it continue? We can't even get an answer on that. But we've also asked, have you brought in any outside agency, the DOJ, the FBI? And so far, it looks like this is being handled internally. Justice Gorsuch's comments seem to echo that and confirm that. So we're waiting. But listen, we all want to know what happened. We all want to know who the leaker was. A lot of people immediately jumped to the conclusion it was a clerk. Well, you know their terms run July to July. So that last batch of clerks who would have been there when that leak happened, if one of them was responsible, they've already moved on to a new job and to a new assignment, and they're not at the court anymore. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the Chief Justice allows us to find out publicly. If not, we're all going to be, as journalists, pushing for a leak to the leak report so we can find out exactly what happened, if anyone knows. Speaking of the chief, I want to ask you, we talk a lot about this strong, now fortified six-member conservative block on the Supreme Court. And there was a recent piece out of National Journal from James Ramoser that said it's uh, John Roberts is the chief, but it's Justice Thomas's court. And the idea mm -hmm. that he was quiet on the bench for so long, but now his colleagues defer to him and he usually asks the first question. Um, and often you see in his opinions them following his way. So what do you make of Justice Thomas's leadership on the court. So he's got a, a lengthy history, you know, there. He's got decades now on the court, and he's always been a strong voice for the conservative block of the court, but some say more quiet. I mean, actually physically more quiet because there was a time when he stopped speaking from the bench. Um, he had expressed concern that it was pointless, that, you know, people were there kind of grandstanding sometimes, some of the justices and their comments and going after each other more than they were engaging with the legal advocates before them. But the interesting thing that happened during COVID is they went telephonic. So for a while, they weren't even meeting at the court. They were dialing into a phone tree system to hear arguments from the attorneys and to hold argument, arguments that way. And that led to each of them being called on by the chief justice. Do you have a question? What would you like to say? And in that setting, Justice Thomas began to engage a lot more, is actually asking questions during the arguments. And so it seems like, and that'll be another thing that's interesting to see on Monday, whether he continues that, because he um, seems like he has maybe met some of the concerns that he had in the past about how the sound bites would be used or the perception of what he was asking or how the court is actually functioning. But he's now full-throatedly engaged in those conversations. And I would say, you know, from his briefs, or excuse me, from his opinions, whether he's been in the minority or the dissent, he's always been a very strong voice there. So now we'll see 
if he continues that role in actual or oral arguments as well starting Monday. We'll see indeed. Shannon, we look forward your, to your reporting from when you're able to go back to the court on Monday and, of course, on Sundays as well. Thanks for joining us. Katie, good to see you.